you had to know, you just had to know that we weren't going to just do things running straight off of something. As a matter of fact, the next videos that I'll put together for next week, we will start doing forces involved in things. So we'll push things with friction. They're gonna slide up a hill and we have things all over the place going at angles. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It really is, it's fun. Because now, now we can look at this. Ah, uh, yeah, hi. Hi, Drew. Okay, so we can look at this and say, Drew Brees, is that realistic? Probably not. Not Drew Brees isn't realistic, but he could throw a ball, right? And if he throws the ball at 30 meters per second at some angle, so I, I launched the ball and we're playing in the dome, no air resistance, nice, no air resistance. So I'm gonna throw the ball at some initial velocity and I wanna know, is it gonna hit the player that I want it to? So for football players, this angle here, that gives kind of like the, how far it's going to go, you know, do I want it to go up over the top of somebody who's super tall to where it gets to the receiver? Uh, do I need it to go some certain distance? Oh yes, that's what we'll talk about next. What is the optimal launch angle to get that to go as far as I would like it to go? Because, you know, sometimes that's, some, no, not sometimes in football, it's always important. Does it go the distance I want it to go? Oh, this is exciting. So let's talk about a couple key things here. If I change this from a boring projectile being launched from the ground, it's just that. But if, if we take this, if we're in the Superdome, the crowd's going, well, oh, yeah, it's going crazy, and he's going to throw the ball. What we're going to do is take his launch height from his hand. I'm just going to make this zero. So I'll call this y equals zero. Because two things happen here. When we get to the end of the quarter, yeah, there's going to be his actual height that we'll want to calculate in there for like somebody kicking the ball. But for here, if the player on the other end is the same height, then what doesn't matter is this height below them. Everything we compare to is relative. So if I'm going from the same height to the same height, it doesn't matter if we're standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon and the ball is going over uh, the one ridge to another, the ball doesn't care about this gaping hole in the Grand Canyon. It just knows that from this height, it's going to have the acceleration due to gravity, slowing it down, slowing it down, slowing it down. And remember, with no air resistance, my x velocity is continuing on. So the ball would just keep going this way. And the ball's going up, slowing down, until it hits a point, a peak at the top. At the top of this projectile, projection, my V in the Y is zero. So my vector is decreasing in height and decreasing in height and decreasing in height until it gets to here, and then it's zero. Now it's gonna continue down the other side. Here's a fun fact. If Drew and the receiver are the same height, the ball is going the exact same speed when it hits the receiver's hand as it when it leaves Drew's hand. Cool, that's an important fact. Relating this back to our forces, what is an important fact is this is the split second it leaves Drew's hand. So it's in his hand and he's giving it a big heave ho. It leaves his hand, he no longer has any influence on that ball. He's given it all the force and the acceleration it could have. At this point in time, it has what it has, and now the only force acting on it is in the Y and the X is constant. Same with baseball. As soon as it leaves the pitcher's hand, although I can't see a pitcher throwing a ball at that angle, but I'm not a baseball person. But as soon as it leaves the pitcher's hand, the pitcher no longer has any influence on that. The ball is no longer accelerating relative to that motion from the pitcher. The only thing we have acting on it at that point in time is either air resistance or gravity. So in this case, we're in the dome, there is no air resistance, just the acceleration due to gravity. So it's gonna come over here and land some distance away and we wanna know, is it going to hit? We also wanna know the max height. So there's a couple things we can capitalize on here. I can go like this, I'm like, okay, so at this point in time, it is the velocity in the Y is zero, the velocity in the X is 
that initial, the initial, the initial in the X. Sorry, I was trying to think of a way to notate that. And then as it's coming down, bunk, 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 we get back here, I know that it is now a velocity vector coming down with a net magnitude of 50 meters per second. I've just shifted my axes. So I'm gonna call all of this y equals zero, because that's just same height, that's same height, it's all relative. So we just need to do this. So I look at this, I'm like, okay, this, unlike before, we make our little table, we can go, oops, sorry about that. Let's go like X and Y. So here my V and my X is a component of that. So my V and the X is gonna be, let me do this in a different color, is the velocity vector going like this, and the velocity vector going like that. This is my X component of that velocity. So it's touching the angle, it is 50 cosine of 30. My V initial, let's see, that's, that is just my V in the X, I won't write it twice. So that is, it's final and initial. We know acceleration is zero because that is final and initial. Let's make a note, final and initial. The delta X, well, I don't know that. I don't know how far it's gonna go. Kind of have a goal, but I don't know if it's actually gonna get there. And the time, I don't know. My V in the Y, well, that's gonna be 50 times, well, this is the opposite side, so 50 sine 30. And that would be my V initial, sorry. Got lazy with that. My V final in the Y is gonna be some unknown number, depending on where I'm comparing it to. If I'm comparing it to here, it's going to be exactly the same as it was here. But that doesn't really help me out much. Because if I go from the total motion without knowing what the distance is, then that doesn't help me deduce anything. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna capitalize on something there. So I'm gonna go, A is 9.8. Let's see, what do I want? I'm going up and down. So this time, I think I'll go ahead and be consistent. I'll call down, negative, I'm sorry. So used to flipping it. I'm gonna call down negative and to the left negative. So to the right is positive and up is positive. So in that case, I'm describing my acceleration as negative there. So I get the negative sign, meters per second squared. Be final, we don't know, it depends on where we're looking at. Delta Y, oh again, that kind of depends on what I'm looking at. If I'm landing over here, my delta Y is gonna be zero. I'm starting, I'm ending at the same height I started at. But maybe, maybe we can kind of think about what's happening here and that's gonna help us out some. So I'm gonna put a question mark there. And again, time, we don't know. All right, so what we can do is capitalize on this symmetry that we have going on here. That, that this is going to be a reflection. What happens on this side is the same thing that happens on this side, just in reverse. Here acceleration is slowing me down, here acceleration is speeding me up. The end result is the same because the magnitude of the acceleration is the same. So think of it that way, that my 50 is gonna slow down under the influence of acceleration to this some final height until in the Y, the velocity is zero. Now remember the X, it's still going, but my Y velocity is zero. And then it's going to have that same amount of time it took to slow down to zero to come back down to the ground. That's why the final velocity in the Y is going to be the exact same as it was initially in the Y if I'm landing at the same height. So what I can do then to solve for anything and not feel like I'm spinning my wheels is I can look at this spot and go, so at Y max, at the max height, my V final is zero. I know acceleration. I don't know how high I'm going, but let's take a look at those equations if I have them lying around here. Let's see, what do I got? I know velocity final is zero. I know what the initial velocity is. I don't know how high, but I can figure that out. I know the acceleration. Okay, so this is appealing. This will at least get me its max height. So for like my kickers, then the max height here would matter for will the ball get through the post without air resistance. 
And I have a fun story to go along with that for a different video. I'll look over here, delta y, let's see, but all of these terms require time, don't have it, won't help. This one, well, let's see, what could I do? I know it's initial, I'm sorry, I know it's final is zero. I know it's initial, ah, so I could solve for time. Ooh, if I solve for time, that would give me the time to get to the half the distance. So wouldn't that mean then if I double it, I will get the total time that I've traveled? And if I get that total time that I've traveled, wouldn't I then be able to get to the distance? Because remember, our x is handy. It's staying constant, right? So rate times time equals distance, delta x. Oh, I like that. So let's solve for time. After all, it asks us what the total time is. So I have v final equals v initial plus at. Or recall that this is just the definition of acceleration. v final minus v initial divided by time gives me acceleration. But in this case, I want time. So I'm going to divide by acceleration. And I know that my v final I'm talking about this top peak here is zero. And let's see, I've defined acceleration as negative, so let's rewrite this. I have negative v initial, which is this 50. I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to write no units, sine 30, divided by acceleration, negative 9.8. This is my double check that my signs are good, because time should never ever be negative. So I have been consistent with my signs. Whoops, sorry about that. And let's try this out. So 50 times sine of 30, there we go, divided by 9.8. Gives me Oh shoot. Oh shoot. But we weren't at angles then. I'm sorry. I just forgot mode. I'm in radians. Like, why did I get a negative number? That's bad. So that is one thing to keep in mind is to always double check your settings on your calculator to make sure you are in the units you plan on being. So degrees, there we go. Let's try this again. There we go, not a negative value. So I get 2.55 seconds, cool. So my, this is halfway, just re reinforcing this. This is to here. It's gonna land out here somewhere. So two times t by symmetry, it's just a reflection, will give me my t total equals t total, t total. So multiply that bad boy by two, and I get that my total time t total, I do, stop saying no. T total equals 5.1 seconds. Cool. So for, for pen cap on my toe. For this, now I can come over here. I know my total time. I know my initial velocity, right? So I have 50 cosine of 30 times time times my 5.1 seconds. It's going to give me the total distance that I go. So times 50 times cosine of 30. Wow, Drew, you threw it far. Either that or you're not throwing it that far. 220.93 meters. Um, so we've answered that. This is the total distance then it's covered. We got that by taking advantage of the symmetry that it's slowing down, coming to a stop there. And then by the time it gets back down here, it's going to be at the exact same velocity as it was here. And so doubling the time from here to here gives me the total time that's in the air if it's coming back to the same spot. So I will add in some fun little challenge problems where it's not coming back to the same spot. And we'll explore that. Now what? The V at 1.5 seconds. Oh, so now remember, remember, I'm missing a cap. I'm gonna end up with red marker everywhere. This V is everything's V. So I know what X is, is. that's not, not changing. I need to know what the Y velocity is at 1.5 seconds. So let's see what do we have here. 
So if I look at this, this has acceleration time. I has my initial velocity. So I can solve for the y velocity here. So let's just do that. So I'll have v final equals v naught is this 50 sine 30. And let's see, 50 sine 30 plus, plus negative 9.8 times the time given, times the time given, which was 1.5 seconds. So what does this do for us? Well, what's going to happen is this negative 9.8 is initially going to slow it down. If this 1.5 seconds is after it's cleared here, well, then we'll start seeing an increase. So this thing actually takes it to zero. If I was looking at a, a graph, I would see that it is got this linear decrease, hits zero, and then keeps going to where now its velocity is speeding up. So that's very cool about this, that it will accurately give you that information. So let's see what its velocity is here. We're almost done, I promise. 50 times sine, there we go, sine of 30 minus 9.8 times 1.5. Gives me 10.3 and a positive value. So I want to keep that in, and in mind. So V final is 10.3 meters per second. So what that means is at that 1.5 seconds, if I hadn't calculated this yet to figure out what halfway is, I would know that at 1.5 seconds, I am still slowing down. So I'm still going up. I haven't made it to the top yet. So that's cool. So I know that. So it's overall velocity, the magnitude of its velocity then, is going to be the square root of 10.3 squared plus this 50 cosine of 30 squared. So I can just throw that in my calculator, square that guy, plus 50 times cosine of 30. Make sure I square the whole thing and not just one portion of that. That's an easy mistake to make. And square it. Oh, take the square root. Yeah, no, it's definitely not going that fast. To the one half. There we go. <clears throat> so at 1.5 seconds, it is going 44.5 meters per second. It's still moving pretty fast. And there we have it. So by taking advantage of symmetry, we can really simplify these problems. And if it was going further down, you can just start this as a starting point where you know what its initial velocity is here. And then you just kind of add in those extra pieces. That's all you got to do. Uh, for the next videos, I'll do a couple more that are a little bit more involved, and then you can see how we can pull it together with forces. Go birds.